Okay, we are back. D shop in the morning on this fine Friday TGIF. And uh, we're waiting for Eric to call in, but we have ex fiance Rika. Welcome. Uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you too and all the listeners. Yes, yes, TGIF. Um, so let me ask you, um, before we're waiting for Eric to call in and and and, and could still be on the on the conversation after Eric has to go too. Oh, he's calling actually now. Um hold on. Is he calling? Oh, yes, he's calling down. Okay. An incarcerated individual at maximum security facility. All right. This is, this is it. Private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse, thank you for using Securus. Oh, you may right. start the conversation now. Welcome, Eric, of course, again from the Adult Correctional Institution here in Rhode Island, and we have Rika on the phone. Uh, Eric, I was just asking Rika before you called, um, how does it feel to be in a relationship with him incarcerated? And, and same thing with you, Eric. How does it feel to be in a relationship with, with her on the outside? How tough is it or how easy is it for both of you? You want to go first? Good morning. Good morning. You want to go first? Rika? Good morning. Um, um, My relationship with him kind of flows easily. Um. The only hard part is dealing with the 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 jail, you know, the yeah. prison system. That's the only hard part of the relationship. And are you allowed to visit him on the inside a lot? Yes. So that's good. So that's good. And, and what about you, Eric? Well, well, you know, it's it's it, it's tough. You know, what I mean, it's tough because you know you you have that you have the mental connection, you have the spiritual connection, but you don't have the physical connection and. You know, you, you, you it's tough because the stresses of what you deal with in here in prison with, you know, with the correctional staff and all of the other things, you know, the other hundreds of inmates that you're dealing with their personalities. Sometimes, you know, that 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 stress that's weighing down on you in here that you're dealing with all of that, it tends to reflect on your relationship sometimes. So I might be stressed out for other reasons and then I might call her. And, you know, we get to talking and, and then it shows in my, you know, it's not meaning to take out my frustrations on her or anything like that, but she she's going through it too. So it's like when I'm incarcerated, she's incarcerated. You know what I mean? Because when you're spiritually and mentally connected and, you're, and, you know, emotionally connected to someone, when they're up, you're up. And when you when they're down, you know, you're down. So being, me being in here is also has her incarcerated as well. So also too, it's kind of tough. Eric, you, you you have a son too, right? Yes, I have a son. And he's, I have a son. How, how old is 18. he? Oh, he's 18. He's 18. Yes. How, 18. And, I, and he visits you too? Yes, he does. He visits me. And and how hard is that being a parent that, like, like I, I go to my son's school for parent-teacher conferences or, or, or this thing or that thing, and it must be hard for you too to be a parent that you can't go to the school's functions and everything like that. How, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is hard, and it's hard just being not being able to be there. You know, like I said, uh, Rika's children are my children as well. You know, so it's it's like she has two children. She has a son that's six, and she has a girl that's twelve. You know, so Zakaya and Xavier, and it's kind of hard too. You know, I would I would like to be there to play with 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 Xavier. You know. I love them just like I love my children. I love them just like I love my children. So it's kind of hard, you know, and I got a boy. I got a girl, too. She's, she's 10 years old. She goes to gymnastics. You know, she's doing a gymnastics. She's a cheerleader for a football team. You know, she does. So it's kind of hard when I hear that I can't be there because she has asked, hey, how come all my other friends, their fathers are here, but my father ain't here. Where is my father? You exactly. Know? So, it, it, so, so that crushes me, you know. When this prison prison takes and it has a ripple effect on everybody, all your loved ones, you know. So it's not just you that's infected by the incarceration. Sure. So so what else, guys? Um, this is this is your conversation. This is your segment. What do you guys want to talk about on this fine Friday? Well, you know, I I, I was you know I, I was like Rika. If she wants to, you know, elaborate on a few things because she's out there, you know, and she wants to elaborate on a few things. I I would like her to take the wheel. You know, and uh, 
you know, we could talk about, because I, I remember yesterday we were discussing some of the things that was going on now, and, you know, she's, she's my biggest champion I have out there as far as, you know, making sure that everything goes well. Remember, I was telling you with the things that are going on now with this uh, corrupt prosecutor that was uh, that was in my case. Yep. And um, so right now we're working on that. So our main goal now is to try to get me home. You know, even though we was working on that before this bombshell came out. So my main goal now is to try to get me, you know, get me home and, you know, so that way we can start our life together. It is hard, you know. It, 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 it's not It's not easy. Sure. And, and I don't, like I said, I take, I take full responsibility. I'm not one of the guys that say, oh, you know, this system. and everything. I've had a lot of my decision. I, I have done a lot of introspection into my into my uh, decision making. And I have a lot to play into the things, some of the things that I've done. I already make a lot of good decisions in my life. So I don't totally blame. I'm not one of those people that blames the system for all my problems and, and blames everybody else for all my problems. I can take responsibility and say a lot of decisions that I made in my past were not good decisions, you know. So and, and, and henceforth, added on with some of the other things that went on, circumstances just played out that, you know, unfortunately, um, I ended up spending nine years of my life in prison, you know. Sure, you know? sure. So it's just, that's, that's, but like I said, that, uh, the, the foundation that we, uh, that the organization that we created is, is to, is to give, because of those families, because you are incarcerated, then Rika is a prime example of this, and all the other loved ones out there that have family members that are incarcerated, they are affected by this incarceration. The children are affected, the, the, the parents, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, everybody, everyone that supports them. The person of the uh, has a loved one or has somebody that's incarcerated, they're all affected by it. So, and, and they become they become subject to the systems. You know, when Rika, I'll let Rika explain to some of that uh, uh, scrutiny she goes through coming through the security yeah. and see me up at the facility. You know, you want to speak on it, babe? Yeah, sure. Like, um, at the Christmas, well, actually, the week of Christmas, I went to go see Eric and, um, they, if you have like metal on your boots or on your sneakers or whatever, they'll make you take off your shoes. But there's nothing to like balance yourself on unless you um choose to walk back through the um, metal detectors and they have a bench. But if you and if you do walk back through the metal detector, that counts as another um beep, and you only get three um walkthroughs. Wow. Yeah, you only get three tries for for it to beep. If it beeps three times, then you you can't come in at all that day. You have to um come back for the next visit. So I try not to walk back through and I just, you know, try to balance myself and take off my boot. Well, I did that and I was um, told that I was intoxicated and if I was on medications or if I was drinking and driving, all types of bull crap. And um, they made me um, go home after I spent like $27 in an Uber to get up there. Wow. And it's never happened to me. I was like kind of shocked. Like I, I do this every time I come up here. You know, loosely, it was a um, loosely. It's another staff member that does the um the walkthrough, search, whatever. And um, it was a different guy that day, and he just was just a total asshole. Wow. That is something. Wow. And I'm like, well, if you consider me being drunk, don't they have, like, breathalyzer tests and all that other stuff? Wow. <laughs> he didn't even attempt. And I was like, actually, no, I'm just excited to see Eric because he's no use out him on restriction for 15 days, but I couldn't speak to him on the phone. Sure, sure. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and this was Christmas Day, so my dad, and it's like, you know, like I said, the, so these are the things that our family members, so it frustrates them too, and it's, they're, subject, they're subject to some of the scrutiny, and I had to go up to the, uh, you know, the, the lieutenant here and tell him, my, you know, why didn't you let my visit in, why didn't you let my, my fiance in, and, you know, his excuse was, Oh, she was a little high strung. I said, what are you saying? She's intoxicated? Because I know she don't do any drugs or anything. He's like, well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying she's high. she was high strung and first impression. I said, she's not an enemy. So sometimes they tend to blur the lines between your family members being members of the public, taxpayers, and, you know, then you being the enemy. You know, they try to blur the line because they don't see, a lot of times they don't see the difference between the two because of the power of authority, the dynamic of power. Sure. So, yeah, so, you know, it's, like I said, though, so that's just one example of the hardship that family members go through. So the organization, their, our, 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 our mission and our mission statement as a team was to get the families more of a voice 
get the loved ones more of a voice to be able to, you know, to, to be able to have some type of power when it comes to, you know, correctional staffs, when it comes to, you know, uh, 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 in the criminal justice system. That way it gives the, it gives the families more of an ability to have a say in how their loved ones are treated, how their loved ones are given, uh, because we don't really have that many people out there to advocate for us, you know, like it's, it, it's like a, there's a, there, that's like a vacuum of it's, that's not being filled. Like where, where society has, oh. in my opinion, in my opinion, I believe society has moved more towards the mob mentality, like the hang them, you know, like forget about them, hang them. I think everybody deserves a, 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 a second chance in life to, to give it to, a, a chance at redemption. You know what I mean? Sure. And, is, is more of this mob mentality like uh if, don't get me wrong when i see certain things on tv a crime that's committed against a child a woman and stuff like that i get frustrated too and i get the i get, I let my anger overtake me and say you know what that guy should be buried in jail he should never see the day of life and i'm in prison saying this you know what i mean right but for the fact that sometimes i gotta fall, i gotta take a step back and say you know learn the circumstances of the situation everybody has different circumstances not everybody's situation is the same and also, I have to also take a step back and say, well, you know, maybe that guy's innocent. I don't know. You know what I mean? So it's like before people jump to conclusions, I say, always learn the circumstances of each individual before you jump to the conclusion and, and, and try to say nobody should ever have redemption. Nobody should ever, you know, one bad decision does not make you a bad guy in your life. You know what I mean? Or Because you can wake up one morning, you could be a tax, uh, you know, a a law-abiding citizen, a taxpayer, and you can make one wrong decision and your whole life could change, you know? It, it, it happens all the time. So, sure. Well, I, well, yes, I, you saw you, you saw the movie Shawshank Redemption, right? Yes, I've seen it well, several well, times. What do you think about that movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think it's actually, I think it's a good movie, you know what I mean? I think, you know, it, it, it was, it, there's a lot of dynamics to the movie that, that plays out in real life, you know what I mean? And it, it's just, some people don't, some people fortunately don't have the chance of redemption. You know, you could come to prison and anything can happen to you while you're incarcerated. So, you know, sure. some people might not make it back out to have that chance of redemption. Sure. And I think, yeah, and like I said, I don't believe everybody should be given a chance if you're a dangerous person or you harm, harm you're, you're, you're harmful to society, then, then I understand there's a place for you, but if you are just somebody that made mistakes in your life, and you know, I think you should have a chance. Everybody, most people deserve a chance at, at redemption. You know? Sure. And, yeah, so that's just. And I remember yesterday we was talking about the homeless. Thing. We was talking. About, I wanted to touch up on the homeless thing yesterday that we was discussing. Yes. And you know, in the home, in, in the homeless society out here in Rhode Island, see. This is a problem too. So imagine if you have people out there that don't have criminal records that are homeless. Imagine what it's like when you step out of prison and you don't have a place to live. Exactly. You know what I mean, like it, it's, it, 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 you don't have a support system. So I think people in Rhode Island were more upset of those homeless people living outside of the state house than they were the fact that they were homeless in the first place. You know what I mean? And what was the root cause of the problem of why they're homeless? It's not one issue, it's many issues of why a person could be homeless. But I think that instead of finding the solution, work with each individual and find a solution to their problem to cure their homelessness or to help them, you know, get back on their feet. Instead of doing that, they just have people are upset. Why are they camping out in front of the state house? This is not a place for protest. Like, I, I don't, it's like, you I, know, I just don't get the, the outrage on that. I spoke to some of those homeless people. It was, it was, again, I had two of my friends that were homeless. And, and the thing is, around, around the holiday season, and I spoke to them and, Find out the issues. You gotta find out the issues. Why? Like I, I asked you on on, on the first day on what made you cause to do the things you did, and the thing is, you gotta have the root, the root cause of why they're homeless. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's always a reason behind everything. And I think COVID played a big part in a lot of people being homeless, losing their jobs and whatnot. Yeah, and also too lack of income, the the, the rise in inflation too. Uh, we're gonna see more homeless people probably at the end of this year and the end of next year if inflation keeps going up. Yeah, eggs is like eight ninety nine. The, the, the rise of housing, you know, the, the, the 
housing price market and the cost of how the cost of living never mind the cost of living of groceries and everything like that but just think of the cost for rent now you get it's hard you know a one bedroom is how much uh baby like a one a one bedroom is is, is almost a thousand dollars now so mm -hmm. it's like rent prices went up everything went up me i'm a single father i i'm I, i'm paying fourteen hundred dollars for two bedroom and I, my rent's going to go up by March by another hundred dollars, you know. And it's like, you, you know, uh, um, um, and, and I work several se several jobs, <laughs> and I'm a single dad, you, you, you know. So it, it, the the thing is, you know, the, everybody has their own their own issues, their own struggles. How did you get here? How, 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 you know, and 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 the thing is, I have people that wanted me to help them in their own way, you know. And, and and before some of my my own friends died, I wish I could have done more. And and then I said, well, I got my own things to do, but I can help you in my own way. And the thing is, some people have to realize that even though I I can't help them fully, I can help them on, in my own way. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what matters. That's what you know. At least you're doing a difference, helping them out. And and just because someone can't do this, then maybe they could do something else, right? Mm -hmm. To wonder why are they doing this? Do they want more people to steal and then go to jail and then go to prison eventually? Is that what the ultimate goal is of this society that they want people to do that and, and they want people to go to jail more? I, I don't know. There's always an end game to something, you know. That's why they keep on funding these private prisons. Yeah. To fill them up. Yep. Opportunity, is, opportunity is. Uh, uh, that I think that every day, I think if somebody is given an opportunity, then they're being put in a position to do better. You know what I mean? And if you if you can't tell a group of people or anybody in this in this world that they can't, they'll they they're not going to be successful if they don't have an opportunity to succeed. You know, if you open up a seed, if you give a person just a little mustard seed, it could turn into anything. You know what I mean? So I believe that people should should given opportunities to be able to excel, you know, to where they need to go. You know, from one opportunity, you get another opportunity to the next opportunity. And if you're willing to put in the work, I think you can succeed. And you never know. You know, I don't, I think it's also the corporations out there are greedy. You know, the price gouging, they, you know, they're passing the buck on to the, on to the, on to the, on to the, uh, uh, to the, to the, to the regular people, the consumers. And, those are part of the. Those are part of the reasons I believe that inflation is going through the roof and it's making it hard for people to 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 uh, to, to survive. You know? Sure, sure. So it might not. It might be another conspiracy of trying to incarcerate uh, a, a lot of people because it, it's an ecosystem too. You you know the prison the, the prison the criminal justice system is all an ecosystem. You know you have you have the cops. You know, you have the police officers who enforce the law. You have the prosecutors. You have the prisoners, the, the, the correction officers. You have the probation officers. That's a whole other ecosystem within itself. You have the judges. You know, everybody is making money. You know what I mean? Everybody is making money off of somebody being incarcerated. So I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> hey, I, I, I got incarcerated for three times, actually, in my life. Um, 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 but not as long as you. I mean, I mean, I was in jail for one night doing... Um, um, Something happened with me and my sister back in the day, you know, and then and then and then and then when I lived in Georgia, I I I, I had a I had a fight with my ex-wife's wife. <laughs> That's a long story. And then right before I moved back up here, right before I moved back up here, 
Um, the last time I went to jail was so stupid. You have one minute left. I I I I, oh. I got I got arrested for going through a stop sign because my license was suspended for a week, and all the red tape I had to get my car out of impound. So I know how it is, and all the freaking red tape, and uh, just a just a little just a little something. You know, you know, I had a little taste of it. So so, you know, what you're going through, I I I, I give you a lot of credit for what you're doing, and. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you join my show next week for whatever that you want to talk about next week too. You know. All right, and I like people to like, I like people to go on. Uh, you know, if you got questions for me, to go on e yakin four one at gmail dot com. That's e y a c h i n four one at gmail dot com, and follow the Prisoners Family Union. Join, put your comments on there, like it, share it with your family and friends out there. Also. You can continue the conversation with Rick if you'd like. Uh, it's time for my close up. Thank you, thank thank you, you all for having Goodbye. me on your show. All right. And that was Eric over here, D Shop. And when we have Rick is still on the line over here. Anything you want to add um, um, before you go? Um, No, I think I've you know, said enough. He kind of okay. said a lot. <laughs> well, I do thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll, I think uh, you can touch uh, next week, too. So thank you very much, D Shop in the morning. Thank you very much. All right, and there you go. Um, um, we'll continue the shop of the morning on this fine Friday. More to continue here on the shop in the morning. More to come.